There was some events that happened when I was like six years old, um, childhood sexual abuse. I hadn't really dealt with it as a child, so I didn't know how to deal with it as an adult. I had no tools. Perpetrators can kind of sniff that vulnerability out. Children need to be educated and they need to be able to vocalize this when it, when it is happening because I think children just don't know how and it's very shameful. It shouldn't have to be. I'm in the midst of writing a book. It's very scary because it's gonna be my true story and I was afraid of judgment, you know, shame. But I knew it was something that I had to do because I saw what went on in my life and I just, I just don't want that to happen to children. So I had to come forward with my story, as painful and shameful as it is. When he was arrested, I realized I had a huge responsibility to come forward and bravely tell my story. The book is an accumulation of personal journeys from both the past and the present. The abuse I suffered as a child and what led me to the unfortunate abuse I experienced at Zorro Ranch. And of course, how that has impacted me today. My hope in writing this book is to heal myself and make a new way for myself. To erase the shame and replace it with self-love and awareness. I seek to embrace the little girl that was abused and hold her forever in my heart. The meaning of the excerpt, my nightmares have been just so vivid and haunting and have affected my everyday life. Um, and so it's, it's more of a dream sequence. French doors opened up to a private patio area, which led to a lovely garden with fountains, a gazebo, and the most amazing grouping of wind chimes. One particular large chime would create notes from the winds, whispers, or screams. One early morning, just before the dawn showed up, as she always does, with tears in her dewy eyes, as she cries from the sadness of the night's razor-sharp grins. I awake to the sound of my name being called, followed by a perfect bar of notes from this enormous chime. It created a ghostly, melodic vibration. It was eerie, but hauntingly beautiful. Did the spirit world feel compelled to call me by name? I believed it did that morning, but a darker spirit would reveal itself to me in a dream a week later and rattle my bones. And in those glittery nights where gold seemed to lie, a dark shadow cast its lure of deception upon me. It's the morning of October 31st, 2019. I've awoken from a terrible nightmare along with the news of a second autopsy commissioned by Jeffrey Epstein's brother, Mark Epstein. But first, the nightmare. He was caged with animals and his fate was forever determined by a lifetime in prison. A group of people, including myself, paraded by in a single file line to see him. We gawked at the beasts behind their bars. No one knew him personally except for me. I felt sorry for him. Guylen was talking to me, but I couldn't see her. She had questions and concerns about her love. He had been deemed insane. He noticed me as I approached closer. He gave a desperate smile and a shy wave, a far cry from the cavalier armored grin he wore in real life. He's kneeling on his knees beneath a hay covered floor and his hands grasp beyond the bars. He's reaching for the freedom he will never have. The cows and goats are gnawing at his tattered t-shirt. As I get closer, I can see his lips quivering and he reeks of fear. I come in closer to deliver the message. The only way you'll ever survive this is if you pray for forgiveness. He scoffs at the idea and any ounce of compassion I had for this pathetic man has dissipated into thin air like the last drink of a thirsty castaway's water. I have no room in my fragile heart for this any longer. He has taken my soul before, and my faith has allowed me it back. 
his face, his face suddenly turns to ashes and I'm choking on them as they blow down my windpipe and infiltrate the alveola of my lungs. I run away frightened. Once I am safely away from him, I regain, I regain my airway and can breathe again. We are now gathered at a large conference table. Guilaine is sitting next to me. She starts discussing the gravity of his situation and is desperately trying to defend his actions. She turns to me and looks me in the eyes and says these exact words. Yes, admittedly, all those girls. I wake up and feel like I've just been down another rabbit hole with J.E. and G.M. as I have before in real life. These vivid images are upsetting, and all I can do is cry. I cry for my soul, I cry for his, but I continue to weep for the countless young women and girls that he has left a permanent scar, a regretful and ugly tattoo.